Okay. I think I can start. Ma'am, uh, it's showing converting file. Yeah, it's converting mine also. Let me try again. Just uh, I'll try it one more time. Yeah, I think it's appearing now. Yeah, yeah. It's taking time, huh? That is uploaded. It's uploaded. Is it? Oh, I can't yeah, see it. Hold on. I can see. Wait, I can't see it. Just hold on. Sorry, it's not appearing for me. Let me just have a look. Yes, even I've got it. All right, let's start. So good evening and welcome everybody to another session by Sujata and me, Dr. Deeksha. Today's topic is prognosis after observing the action of the remedy. In other words, Ken's 12 observations. Um, from an exam point of view, this is a very important topic because it does appear very often and that too has a long answer. So many students have requested for this topic because this is something that you cannot just understand. Unfortunately, you have to buy heart some of it also. So we have tried our best to make it easy and uh, uh, memorable for you to understand and remember for, from an exam point of view. Um, also, please bear with us if there is any issue with the sound, sound quality, internet connection. We're all struggling with a bad connection once in a while. So if there's anything, let me know in the chat box down there and we'll see what we can do. Okay. So let's uh, carry on and let's proceed with the presentation. Sujata, take it away. Okay, ma'am. Hmm. So, a very good evening to everyone. So first of all, uh, thank you so much, Patrick sir, for giving me this opportunity and Dipsa ma'am for guiding me through all this. So like you all know about today's topic, that is Kane's 12 observations. Ken uh, describes uh, these observations in detail in, uh, in his uh, philosophy chapter 35, prognosis after observing the action of the remedy. So basically, what is prognosis? Prognosis is the like after giving the remedy, the condition um, is direction mein ja hai, that is uh, about prognosis. Uh, like uh, it, it is curing or uh, it is not. So that is called uh, prognosis. So, Kim, uh, in first paragraph, he uh, mentions the, uh, the lines that these observations I'm going to give you have grown out of much watchfulness, long waiting, and watching. So, after uh, so much watch, uh, watching and waiting, then Kim uh, finds these observations and describes uh, it in his philosophy for us. So, then after a prescription has been made, the physician commences to make observations. So watching, waiting and observing has to be done by the physician in order to judge the changes and then decide what to do and what not to do. So our duty is not, uh, not only just um, prescribing any remedy. 
after case taking and prescribing any remedy uh, but but also after a prescription has prescription has been made we have to commence uh, we have to wait and watch and observe like what is the um, disease condition of this direction mein ja raha hai we have to watch so we have to be uh, watching and what watching waiting and observing has to be done by the physician after prescribing the remedy and if uh, so here also comes the word unprejudiced observer because uh, not only in case taking but also after case taking prescribing any remedy and after that also we have to be an unprejudiced observer because uh, kent uh, mentions in this chapter that if the homeopathic physician is not an accurate observer his observations will be indefinite if his observations are indefinite his prescribing will be indefinite so you also we have to be unprejudiced observer so now the whole focus of the physician should be centered upon the change in the symptoms because that is the only thing of which gonna tell us that uh, cure is occurring or not the direction that the symptoms take is sufficient to tell us about the prognosis and about the patient is improving or not so our whole concentration our whole focus should be centered upon whether our patient is improving or not uh, by the remedy we have given him so the changes we may expect like uh, we discussed in the previous slide that the changes in the symptoms is enough to tell us about the condition like it's curing or not so what are the changes we may expect uh, first is disappearance of symptoms or amelioration of symptoms aggravation of symptoms appearance of new symptoms or new order of appearance of symptoms or symptoms take the wrong direction these are the changes we may expect after giving the remedy the mission of the physician does not stop with the prescription of the remedy itself because in aphorism 1 the physician's high and only mission is to restore the sick to health to cure as it is termed so cure karna hai hame patient ko so uh, our mission is not uh, just completed here after we prescribing any remedy especially in chronic cases he has to make some observation to know whether the remedy is bringing out any cure purity reaction or not how the remedy is acting what has to be done next the second prescription and the conjunctive prescriptions depend upon these observations only so uh, here also we have to be an unprejudiced observer to observe exactly what is happening what are the changes happening with the symptoms to know whether our patient is curing or not so now comes to what are these 12 observations which uh, kent describes or and uh, we will most finally in our cases as well in our practice as well so those 12 observations the first observation is about a prolonged aggravation and final decline of the patient and these graphs uh, i um, collected it from uh, organon of medicine book by uh, dr asok kumar das so uh, i just put it here so it will be uh, easier for you to understand so first observation is about a prolonged aggravation and final decline of the patient so uh, in this graph above there is aggravation and uh, below there is aggravation so there is a prolonged aggravation and then final decline of the patient so by these observations what uh, we can interpret what is the interpretation maybe that case is incurable we cannot cure that case so that is a uh, just there is the, in that case that is uh, pathological destructions may have already taken place reactions of vital force are reached uh, at that stage where its action its reaction is impossible or useless so uh, so so that it is an incurable case and we administered that antiseptic remedy was too deep and too high for too high potency for that case so that prognosis is unfavorable in first observation and the case is incurable so now what should we do 
if the first observation comes in our case so first antidote the remedy because there is already pathological changes happened already pathological destruction has happened so we have to first antidote the remedy then uh, choose any remedy uh, if uh, that is um, uh, which is uh, perfect for that case and decrease the potency to just to palliate because the case is incurable the patient can never be cured we have just to palliate the case and just to give him the temporary relief now what is the lesson we learn from this first observation so in incurable and doubtful cases we have to start with 30th and 200 potency and never repeat the dose too frequently and observe whether the aggravation is going too deep or prolonged if the aggravation is going too deep or it prolonged then we have to first antidote that remedy which we have given and then choose according to uh, the symptoms totality and cases with organic or pathological advances and deep acting remedies should not be given in those cases deep acting remedies should not be given and only start the treatment with low potency that is 30th and 30th is the low potency for everyone so now come to the second observation the second observation is that long aggravation but final and slow improvement here also in first observation there is prolonged aggravation here also there is long aggravation but here in second observation there is final and slow improvement but in first observation the patient is patient's condition is declining in second observation there will be final and slow improvement so by this graph we can understand that aggravation and then there is slow and fi final and slow improvement graph is going towards the amelioration so now what is the interpretation if uh, second observation comes so that there is also pathological destruction happened already happened in that case but that changes are just in the beginning stage vital force is still in the form to react to react because after prolonged aggravation vital force is reacting and patient condition is going towards improvement so that means there is already pathological changes happened that's why there is prolonged aggravation but if the patient is finally improving uh, although the, the improvement is slow but patient is improving that means that pathological changes are just in the beginning beginning stage and we we administer the perfect remedy at the right time so the prognosis here is favorable the patient is uh, patient will be cured so what to do so do not uh, disturb the action of the remedy we just have to wait and watch if uh, that final and slow improvement or uh, amelioration stops then we have to repeat the dose but the remedy we have chosen is correct for that case if the second observation appears after giving the remedy so now what is the lesson we learn from this second observation so better to start any medicine in low potency so that uh, we can watch that this medicine is acting or not if there is pathological changes then if we give the high potency then the patient condition is uh, will be uh, worse so we have to start with low potency and in doubtful cases always keep the antidote ready because in doubtful and incurable cases we never know um, if uh, the first observation appears or the second observation so we have to always uh, keep the uh, keep the antidote ready so that if the first observation ha happens then uh, we can first antidote that case uh, that remedy and then administer the perfect remedy for that case so now comes the third observation so the third observation is aggravation is quick short and strong with rapid improvement of the patient here also aggravation occurs but that aggravation is for short period of time and that is strong and quick with rapid improvement of the patient so from this graph there is uh, aggravation and then aggravation is short quick and strong and then rapid improvement of the of the patient so graph is going towards the amelioration 
So now what is the interpretation? So this is the classic homeopathic aggravation. So basically homeopathic aggravation is uh, uh, just a slight intensification of existing symptoms. So uh, this is the classic homeopathic aggravation. And our remedy is correct. Vital force uh, reaction. Uh, vital force is in reactive stage. And there is no structural changes in vital organs. Only superficial. Like vital organs means there is the heart, lungs, kidneys, nothing happened there. Only just uh, that structural change uh, just in tissues. So only superficial. So here progress is very good. Then what to do? What to do? Do not disturb the action of the remedy. Just wait and watch because a patient is uh, on the road to recovery. So we have to just uh, do not interfere the action of the remedy and uh, let let that remedy act. Then what is the lesson we learn from third observation? These type of observation brings long lasting improvement. Because this is the classic homeopathic aggravation and every physician wants to see this type of classic homeopathic aggravation in his uh, um, chronic cases, in his cases so that uh, he will be um, satisfied that um, yeah, my patient is on the road to recovery and he will recover. So in acute cases, uh, this um, final improvement comes uh, in few hours. But in chronic cases, it will be seen in few days. So now, the fourth observation. So here, there will be no aggravation with recovery of the patient. There will be no aggravation, but patient is recovered. So here, the graph is only towards the amelioration and the recovery of the patient. So what is the interpretation if fourth observation comes? That is the classical homeopathic cure. Because there will be no um, aggravation of symptoms, no harm to the patient, uh, and patient will be cured. So our remedy, potency and dose exactly fitted to, to that case. If fourth observation comes, that is the classic homeopathic cure, then mm, that remedy we choose potency dose exactly fitted to that case and in that case there is uh, no organic or pathological damage to the patient. The condition is not of great depth but only functional. In acute cases it is very good to see fourth observation uh, but in chronic cases it makes the physician in doubt that um, Ma'am, ma 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 my line cut gaya. Ma'am? Yeah, Sujata, can you hear me? Yeah, ma'am, my ma line, line cut gaya. But uh, are you having internet connection? Yeah, yeah. Internet That's okay. You talk. It's okay. We don't have to see your face. We can see the uh, okay. slideshow. That's enough. Keep talking. Okay, ma'am. Okay. okay. No problem. Okay, ma'am. So, uh, in if fourth observation comes, then the interpretation is uh, that is the classic homeopathic cure, and uh, the remedy we choose the potency and dose exactly fitted to the case. And in the case that if there is no pathological or organic changes happen, the condition is not of great depth, but only functional. In acute cases, it is very good to see. Um, uh, in acute cases, it is very good to see this uh, fourth observation. But in chronic cases, it makes physician in doubt that whether it is curative or just palliative. So what should we do? Do not disturb the action of the remedy. Wait and watch that uh, if uh, there is um, uh, aggravation, um, end ko aggravation aata hai, ya, um, patient is recovered. So uh, we do not have to interfere with the action of remedy. We have to just wait and watch like what is happening. So what is the relation we learn from fourth observation? It is the highest order of cure. 
especially in acute cases, yet the physician wished to notice a slight homeopathic aggravation at the beginning so that uh, he will be satisfied that uh, his patient is uh, on the road to recovery and he will be recovered. So, although fourth observation is the highest order of cure, especially in acute cases, because there will be no aggravation, but patient will uh, recover. But in chronic cases, it makes physician in doubt whether that remedy, um, that action is the curative action or just palliate the case, just giving the temporary relief to the patient. So now comes the fifth observation. Here, amelioration comes first and aggravation comes afterwards. So here also amelioration comes, but the patient is not recovered. Here again, after that, aggravation comes. Graph going towards the aggravation. So now, what is the interpretation if a fifth observation came? The remedy was an error because uh, it just gives patient a temporary relief and after that, the condition is aggravated. So that means the remedy was an error. Either that is the partial sim sim similar remedy selected, just the basis of most uh, annoying symptoms, most uh, um, grievous symptoms, and it acts superficially and palliate the um, palliate that case and gives patient a temporary relief. Or the patient is incurable, but the remedy was somewhat suitable. Uh, like uh, if the case was incurable, patient will uh, will never be cured, but that remedy suited to his case and uh, it just palliate that case and give him the temporary relief so here the prognosis is unfavorable because um, after amelioration there is aggravation so that's why your prognosis is unfavorable so what should we do first we have to retake the case like uh, we have to know we have to um, investigate whether um, there is mistake from our side so retake the case and then choose the most similar remedy basing on the um, not only about the most annoying or most grievous symptoms, but also often the general mental symptoms, mental generals, physical generals, all those, and then choose the most similar remedy. And also look for obstacles to cure. So there may be some obstacles which uh, which comes on the way of recovery. So we have to look. We have to also look for obstacles to cure. So now. What is the lesson we learn from fourth observation, from fifth observation? So in a deep seated and severe case, if amelioration comes first, the physician has to suspect the case and re-examine it again. So if amelioration comes first, the physician always ha has to suspect that uh, if uh, that is a curative action or that is the palliative action. So we have to. Um, uh, especially in deep seated or severe cases, if the amelioration comes first, we have to suspect and re-examine it again. Uh, if there is any obstacles to cure or there is any uh, anything wrong happened uh, about uh, in choosing the remedy, so that is the lesson we learn from fifth observation. Now comes the sixth observation, which that is the two short relief of symptoms. There is a relief of symptoms, but that is too short, too short relief of symptoms. So what is the interpretation? So there must be, we must suspect that there must be some obstacles to cure because there is relief of symptoms, but that is for too short period. So that means that there is some obstacles to cure. In acute cases, there may be high grade inflammatory condition of organs, which interfere in the prognosis. In chronic cases, very structural changes happen or organs are destroyed or being in a condition to destroy. Prognosis, bad especially in chronic cases. If uh, this sixth observation comes in chronic cases, then prognosis is bad and uh, we must suspect that there is obstacles to cure. Maybe uh, some um, some obstacles to patient side. Uh, maybe he, मतलब वो जान बुझ के कुछ ऐसे obstacles होते हैं. Like maybe he uh, he's alcoholic or a smoker. So that must be the obstacles to cure. Or uh, some from environment side, like he's working in such environment uh, which comes um, like an obstacles to uh, uh, to his recovery. 
so if six observation comes then there must be some obstacles to cure so we have to look for that obstacles to cure so now what uh, we should do first remove the obstacles to cure first we have to ask the patient if there is uh, some obstacles from patient side or some uh, from environment weather like that so we have to remove those obstacles to cure first in acute cases the dose should be repeated more often um, or choose another more similar remedy in chronic cases do not disturb the remedy uh, if um, there is uh, relief to patient or else choose another more similar remedy so now what is the lesson we learn from six observation we have to suspect if amelioration comes too early because the best amelioration comes gradually that is the observation 3 uh, so that is the lesson we learn from six observation uh, always the best amelioration comes gradually so now the seventh observation so what is the seventh observation a full time amelioration of symptoms yet no special relief to patient here there is amelioration of symptoms but patient feels no relief there is no special relief to the patient so now what is the interpretation if this observation comes latent conditions there is um, something latent conditions or the latent organic conditions patient uh, which prevents the improvement beyond certain stage ek stage tak patient recover kar raha hai and after that there will be no uh, recovery and uh, there will be uh, no relief excuse me sujata yeah uh, i think you might have to move the mouse away from the slide it's not visible uh, ma'am mouse is not on the slide it's not there okay no. okay okay carry on all that carry on okay ma'am yeah So we have to um, first uh, suspect that 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 is the lat there is some latent conditions or the la some latent organic conditions present which prevents the improvement beyond certain stage. Example: If a patient has only one kidney, he can just only improve to a certain limit. He cannot improve like a patient with two kidney improves. So that is some conditions where the patient cannot be cured beyond certain limit. here the remedy is favorable because there is amelioration of symptoms but the patient cannot be cured beyond certain limit so what to do so after the administration of several remedy and the amelioration of case we administered several remedy because we may suspect that our remedy is wrong so we choose another remedy so we administer several remedies and the amelioration of the case existed there is also amelioration temporary relief to the patient often the full length of time of the remedies um, the remedies have the uh, have a particular period of action so after administration of several remedies and the amelioration of the case existed often the full length of time of the remedies but the patient has not risen above his own pitch in this length of time patient is not recovered in this length of time we administer several remedies that remedies acted uh, to their full length of time so after the administration of several remedies and the amelioration of case has existed uh, often the full length of uh, time of the remedy but the patient has not risen above his own pitch in this length of time so here the prognosis is bad patient only curable to a certain limit to a certain extent beyond that limit patient will never be cured so what should i do? what should we do keep the patient just in palliative because he cannot be cured he will just have some temporary relief to a certain extent but he cannot be cured beyond that stage or beyond that limit 
so we have to just uh, keep the patient in palliative so what is the lesion we learn in some latent organic conditions cure is not possible and palliation is the only solution we can only palliate that case and give patient to uh, the temporary relief but we cannot cure that case that is the incurable case because patient will only cure to a certain limit and beyond that he will never be cured so now comes the eight of the patient some patients prove every remedy they get there is some patients after administering the remedy he will uh, come and prove he will prove those remedies so some patient prove every remedy they get that is the eighth observation so now what is the interpretation if eighth observation comes the patient is an idiosyncratic or hypersensitive patients and they are often incurable they are born with this sensitivity and will die with it not capable of rising above this state so if uh, they will prove the higher potency so we uh, we have to in postology we discuss that in idiosyncratic and hypersensitive patients we have to give them the low potencies because high because higher potencies they will prove those um, remedies so we have to give them the low potencies and often they are incurable so we we just have to palliate so what to do go back to 38th and 200 potencies so start with low potencies so that agar wo cure ho sakte hain so then um, they will be cured or else they are often incurable so the lesson we learn that idiosyncratic and uh, hypersensitive patients are good for proving and uh, their case often incurable in acute cases if a uh, these of the uh, eighth observation comes in acute cases we have to uh, start with 38 and 200 potencies and in chronic cases we can go for 38 200 and 500 potencies so now comes the ninth observation so ninth observation is about action of the medicine open provers in eighth observation there will be some patients which will prove who will prove every remedy they get so in ninth observation action of the medicine open provers medicine ka kya action ho raha hai open the provers so uh, what will be the interpretation that healthy provers are always benefited by proving if they are properly conducted if the proving is properly conducted then healthy provers are always benefited by proving um, they will get um, um, highly immunized and all so healthy provers are always benefited by proving the constitutional symptoms of the prover we have to first observe and note it down before administering the remedy what is the constitutional symptoms of the prover like before administering the remedy what is the constitutional symptoms he already have and then they should be subtracted from the symptoms of the drug proved then we can subtract those symptoms from the drug we administered because we we have a drug picture we have those symptoms and then after administering that we have to just subtract those constitutional symptoms which the prover already have from the drug uh, from the drug picture or the drug symptoms that we administer these symptoms will not very commonly appearing during the proving like what are the changes in constitutional symptoms that will not very commonly appear during the proving but if they do if they clearly appearing then note the change in them what is the change actually happening after administering the remedy and before constitutional symptoms what are the constitutional symptoms and after administering the remedy what is the changes happening if that is clearly comes because uh, that will rarely um, comes uh, in constitutional symptoms so if that clearly comes then we have to note uh, that change that what is the change happening in the constitutional constitution of the patient after administering the remedy so now comes the 10th observation new symptoms appear after the remedy after giving the remedy if there is some new symptoms appear so what is the interpretation the prescription is wrong after these new symptoms have passed away the patient will settle down to the original state to the state of sickness which he comes uh, to us to um, uh, which we have to cure 
you will settle down back to that state and there will be no improvement takes place so that that is the wrong uh, happen in uh, our prescription so the prescription is wrong so what to do so before com coming to any conclusion that our prescription is wrong or right we have to uh, look that we have to verify those symptoms those new symptoms whether these are or maybe these are the symptoms which are already present but patient forgetting to mention those but if these are never noticed by patient before agar patient bolta hai ki no these are the new symptoms uh, i never have these symptoms before then uh, then that prognosis that condition is unfavorable there is something wrong happened in our prescription but if the symptoms are not so serious then wait till they pass up and then select another remedy so uh, then we come to know that if uh, these are the completely new symptoms for patient as well then uh, we come that uh, we come to the uh, come to know that that is there is some wrong wrong happened in our prescription so we have to change the remedy and case uh, retake the case again and change the remedy but if those new symptoms are not so serious then we have to just wait and uh, those symptoms are uh, just don't uh, give any medicine just wait those symptoms will uh, go away and then select another remedy based on the totality of symptoms but if the symptoms if those new symptoms are so serious so severe then we have to first antidote the remedy which we have given and then we uh, choose another remedy based on the totality of symptoms so now comes the 11th observation so 11th observation is when old symptoms which are already present before so when old symptoms are observed to reappear so patient a patient aake bolega that i am having these symptoms uh, like uh, four or three months or six months and uh, again these are appearing after you know, taking that medicine so those are the old symptoms which are observed to reappear so what is the interpretation our remedy is correct patient is the is on the road to recovery because symptoms are disappearing in the reverse order of their appearance because first both are symptoms i said then ye symptoms are the jiske basis pe humne medicine diya and after so the symptoms are disappearing in the reverse order of their appearance and that is following the herring law of cure so the patient is on the road to recovery and here prognosis is very good patient will be cured and he is on the road to recovery so what to do medicine has to be left alone do not interfere with the action of the medicine let the medicine act if the old symptoms come back to stay if those old symptoms are not disappearing and just stay come back to stay then repeat the dose but don't change the remedy because that remedy is correct and there is uh, that that cure is following the herring law of cure so medicine has to be left alone and do not interfere if the old symptoms come back to stay agar wo old symptoms disappear nahi ho rahe and uh, just stay then a, a repetition of that uh, remedy will be necessary so what is the lesson we learn from uh, this uh, 11th observation that appearance of old symptoms after prescribing a remedy is a good indication in any case because it follows herring's law of cure so it is going to bring a classical cure because the symptoms are disappearing in the reverse order of their appearance and that is what the herring's law of cure is about so it it is it is following the herring's law of cure so it is going to bring a classical cure so now comes the 12th observation so the 12th observation is about symptoms take the wrong direction सिम्टम्स मतलब कहीं अलग ही डायरेक्शन में जा रहा है सो सिम्टम्स टेक द रॉन्ग डायरेक्शन एंड दैट इज नॉट फॉलोइंग द हेरिंग फ्लॉ ऑफ क्योर सो फर्स्ट आवर रिमेडी इज रॉन्ग बिकॉज सिम्टम्स इज नॉट फॉलोइंग द हेरिंग फ्लॉ ऑफ क्योर एग्जाम्पल आफ्टर ए मेडिसिन इज एडमिनिस्टर्ड इन ए केस ऑफ रिमेटिजम इट प्रोड्यूस इंस्टेंट रिलीफ टू ज्वाइंट पेन बट at the cost of distress to internal organs internal vital organs like heart spine etc 
So here the symptoms going from periphery to center, but Herring's law of cure says that symptoms must go from center to periphery, disappear from their reverse order of their appearance. So it it just so if this happens, twelfth observation happens, then it's just suppressing the case, suppressing that condition. So it it is not cured. Your prognosis is bad. Our remedy, the remedy we choose is is wrong. So we have to change that remedy. So because symptoms are not following the Herring's law of cure. So what to do? First, antidote the remedy because the symptoms are going in wrong direction. We have to first antidote the remedy, then then retake the case and based on the totality of symptoms, a most similar medicine. Should be chosen, but first antidote the remedy. The lesson to learn: the remedy must always be selected upon the general symptom, which defines the patient as a whole. So we cannot just choose any uh, medicine just uh, based on the particulars of um, the case. We have to choose the remedy based on the general symptom, which describes the patient as a whole. His mental generals, his constitution, his physical generals, his general modalities, his desire, avoidance—all these things will uh, make a patient as a whole. So we have to choose the remedy based on the general symptoms as well and as well as the particulars, but not only just upon the particulars. So curative process is always from center to periphery, not from periphery to center. And cure always happens according to the Herring's law of cure, which is the disappearance of symptoms in the reverse order of their appearance, which which happened in eleventh observation. But in twelfth observation, it is the reverse of Herring's law of cure. So, if in any case the reverse of Herring's law of cure is noticed, we have to first immediately antidote the remedy and then retake the case. Then we will choose another remedy which will be perfect for that case. so the conclusion is that in many cases in our homeopathic practice are failed not because of poor selection of remedy or potency but on the account of failure to read correctly the language of sign and symptoms after administering the remedy what are the changes happening in the symptoms we have to uh, we have to correctly read that symptoms or read that language which which those sign and symptoms changes uh, happening so these observation will help us these observation which came to describe these observation will help us because we all are the aspiring homeopaths to train ourselves in such task to choose or to uh, interpret the language of sign and symptom the changes happening after administering the remedy so so that is it i tried my best uh, to easily explain to you about the kens 12 observations hope uh, you all uh, understood that thank you okay thank you so much sujata i think today's presentation was really good it was very crisp very to the point and it gave the details of the 12 observations very clearly to be honest even i struggled with this topic when i was in college mainly because i had to by heart is not much to that you can you know you can't fake your answers if it's wrong it is wrong so this is one particular topic that we have to some to some extent learn uh, and by heart but otherwise it's a very interesting topic because sometimes we wonder why is a patient reacting in a certain way or why is the disease or the disorder going in this direction so that time you can recall and that time you can think of these observations and maybe you know try the different uh, solutions that kent has provided so thank you sujatha very nice uh, set of slides also so we now come to the favorite part or all our favorite part of the session uh, the question and answer session so all those students who want any queries cleared want to ask anything related to this topic please uh, you may start typing your questions in the chat box we will try and clear them as much as we can thank you everybody for your good feedback it's very encouraging so any queries any doubts we start asking i think someone asked a question about giving an antidote in the fifth observation okay so jata i need one help from you uh, whatever 
what whatever observation people talk about can you just put the slide on that particular observation they want the fifth can you just put the fifth observation yeah ma'am yeah hmm. someone's query was that can you give antidote to a fifth uh, uh, antidote in the fifth observation hold on let me just get that question yeah so the question was in fifth observation can we give an antidote uh yeah so in fifth observation it is amelioration comes first and aggravation comes afterwards so can you give an antidote you can if the patient is reacting very severely and very violently and if their uh, symptoms don't seem to be subsiding you can consider an antidote it's not uh, ruled out but you must understand why the aggravation is occurring after an amelioration hold on i'll just get the slide open for myself yeah so the main reason is the remedy was an error and it was not selected properly based on the similimum or it could be a partially similar remedy so wait if if you can the best thing is to wait for the action to get uh, completely uh, you know over instead of putting one more remedy trying to antidote the case because the remedy that you have selected in the first place itself is a wrong or a partially selected similimum so the body is already taking the brunt or taking the impression of a wrongly selected remedy so let the action of that wrongly selected remedy pass over if the patient is really suffering and really struggling then maybe you have to antidote it with a simple antidote so at that time yes in that one particular situation you might have to antidote if the patient is incurable there's not much you can do just wait for the action to pass so that is the answer to that one particular observation okay here's the next question ma'am if possible can you please repeat sixth and seventh observation because at that time okay so swaranjali got disconnected uh, can you put on the sixth observation i can tell her if she'd like hmm so in the sixth observation it says too short relief of symptoms so the patient does not experience the amount of relief or the duration of relief that they would have expected and the symptoms get aggravated all over again so what is the interpretation why does this happen it is because there are obstacles to cure what is an obstacle to cure this has been mentioned even in stuart close even by hanneman basically it is some environmental or external factor that prevents the body from recovering the vital force from taking the help of the medicine and recovering it can be anything it can be an environmental factor it could be a prolonged exciting factor present which is preventing the full recovery it could be a, a high grade inflammatory condition of organs which interferes in prognosis so maybe the attack the acute attack is so severe that the body is taking its own time trying to cope up with the degree of inflammation so something like acute appendicitis the symptoms the pain the inflammation is so severe that it is not possible to just get fully better with one uh dose of one uh, dose of remedy and potency so at that time that is providing the obstacle the high dose of in, high level of inflammation that is one reason in chronic cases there are structural changes so the vital force has already crossed a certain point where it cannot return to its original state because of structural damage in the body again that is an obstacle it is not exactly going to help the body come back to its original state and reverse completely so in chronic cases you can only bring about short relief or short amelioration so what do you do in this what is the prognosis prognosis is not great especially in chronic diseases because it is progressively degenerating progressively uh, undergoing damage which cannot be reversed so what do you do in such a case remove the obstacles to cure that's easier said than done at least in acute cases try to take care of the obstacle whatever is causing the aggravation try to get rid of those obstacles whether it is environmental factors whether it is uh, any any uh, factor that might be causing the aggravation it can be anything it can be a food related aggravation can be environment like the, the climate or the temperature temperature changes it could be some uh, allergy to skin so remove that particular factor for example if the patient is wearing uh, a, a rubber watch or a plastic watch and that is causing a uh, topical uh, allergy make them stop wearing that watch it's as simple as that in chronic cases do not disturb the remedy or else choose another most similar remedy you can't really change the remedy because you've selected the remedy correctly but then there is an obstacle that is preventing the remedy from 
doing its entire job. So you cannot, there is no point, there is no sense in changing the remedy. Continue with that remedy or choose something similar or so, something that follows well uh, with that remedy. So you're at least giving short, short ameliorations to the patient because you know you have limited scope. So this is what you do in the sixth observation. I think seventh observation also, uh, she does. Uh, can we have the seventh observation, Sujata? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So seventh observation is a full time amelioration of symptoms, yet no special relief to the patient. So we see that the patient has uh, at least the symptoms have been ameliorated, but then still there is no special relief. The patient is not exactly satisfied. Patient does not feel the best. So what do we understand from this kind of an observation? Latent conditions or the latent organic conditions are present, which prevent the improvement beyond certain stage. A latent condition means something that is lying. Latent literally means uh, asleep, lying asleep, inactive, without showing its presence, unless there is a stimulus, specific stimulus that will make it flare up. So a latent condition or a latent organic. When we say organic, it means literally a structural change. It, it's to, it is to do with the organ or the organism itself. So organic condition is present. So sometimes the, the symptom itself has been relieved, but then the underlying uh, structural damage or structural change has not, uh, uh, I mean, it, it has not changed at all. So because that is present like that, you cannot again expect a complete recovery or complete relief of the patient. You get what I'm saying? You can, you can uh, relieve the uh, acute pain in the right hypochondrium in a patient of cirrhosis, but it's not going to reverse the liver, liver itself. It's not going to make the liver whole and uh, healthy again. So because that condition, the cirrhosis still exists, even though the pain has subsided, the patient is not actually going to feel better on the long run, in the long run. Or, for example, a patient with one kidney can only improve a certain limit. It's quite obvious. When you have some underlying uh, factor like that, you can't, you can't bring another or produce another kidney using the medicines. So there's only a limited uh, scope again in such a case. The remedy is favorable, which is why you're bringing about an amelioration. But then patient cannot be cured or patient cannot be treated beyond a certain limit because of that unfortunate circumstance. So what do you do in such a case? After the administration of several remedies, the amelioration of the case existed often to the full length of time of the remedies. So the amelioration will last as long as you keep administering a remedy because you've chosen well. But the patient has not risen above his own pitch in this length of time. So the patient is already in a difficult situation. He is not able to rise out of it, which is quite obvious. What is the prognosis? It is bad because you cannot expect a patient to be cured completely. Again, you can only give them relief to a certain extent. So you keep the patient on palliatives, give them relief regularly on a temporary basis. And he cannot be cured. It cannot be annihilated the way we expect our remedies to do because of that underlying condition. So what is the lesson you can learn from this? In latent organic conditions, cure is not possible. And palliation is the only solution. It sounds very dark and depressing, but that is how it is in certain conditions. And you cannot bring about structural changes with our medicines, unfortunately. So give them relief on a daily basis so that they can go about their lives and they can, they're able to cope up and live with the underlying. Okay. What's the next one? Can you explain ninth and 10th observation? I was disconnected. <laughs> I think we'll have to explain all of them again then. Okay, hold on. I will. Okay, I, Rucha, I'll come to your question. Before that, I'll just deal with Dhruv's quest, Dhruv Joshi's question. What should be our expectation after giving first prescription to understand better prognosis? It's it's nothing. First, the, the main, the, the very most important thing in this is your case taking skills. Take the case, analyze the patient, evaluate the symptoms. Three things: case taking, analysis, evaluation. Once you do that, you have an idea of what the patient's constitution is, what the extent of the disease is, and what the nature of the disease is also, whether it's chronic or uh, acute, whether it is deep seated or whether it is superficial. Once you know that, you can expect, you should know what to expect, whether they're going to return to you next week or whether they'll not return to you at all, they'll be satisfied, or whether they'll come back to you in three, four months after a flare up. 
so what should be your expectation after giving first prescription you have to aim to bring about relief in their chief complaints in their presenting complaints that is what every patient wants when they go to a doctor so aim to bring relief in their presenting complaints and when those symptoms get better then you can be assured that you've taken care of at least 70% of the problem if there is an underlying deeper cause that's going to take longer to take, get better sometimes that may not even get cured completely but the patient has to feel comfortable when you send them home you want them to be at least at home for the next 2 3 weeks or a month feeling better from your prescription so prognosis is decided based on your knowledge of the disease and also your case taking skills once you have these two in place then you know that you can expect a certain uh, pattern in the patient it's a very general question so that that's that's the way it uh, goes okay can you again explain ninth and tenth observation sujata can i have ninth observation please yeah 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 ninth observation is action of the remedy of the of the medicine upon provers okay so it's nothing you just have to understand the action of the medicine upon the provers what is the interpretation healthy provers are always benefited by provings if they are properly conducted so the number one condition for a prover should be that they are healthy they should not have any other disease or any other derangement in their body so they are benefit but benefited by the proving if they are properly conducted so they will know i mean if it's their constitutional remedy they will definitely have some benefit from it the constitutional symptoms of the prover have to be carefully observed and noted down they should be subtracted from the symptoms of the drug so we have taken it for granted or we have assumed that this drug has already been proved so you have the symptoms of this drug already in place when you're giving it to a healthy person look for their constitutional symptoms what is a constitutional symptom something that is deep acting something that is peculiar pqrs something that is to do with their genitals see particulars can be seen based on what disease uh, the drug can bring about in a uh, healthy person but a general is very very specific to a general symptom is very specific to that particular individual so that comes under constitutional symptoms there are there any mental changes are there any physical general changes look at their constitution their build their temperament age all these things see if a certain set of people belonging to a certain category are affected by it and note those down that is the most important that's what tells you about the drug and the constitution of the patient these symptoms will not very commonly appear during the proving if they do not change if they do note the change in them so if the patient you know is able to note these symptoms uh, clearly these symptoms may not appear because they are not supposed to be common symptoms constitutional uh, remedy constitutional symptoms are supposed to be more rare peculiar queer rare and strange pqrs so it will not appear in everybody and they will not pay much attention to it but if it does appear and it comes under your observation then make a note of it the patient may or may not uh, note it down that's that's the you know that is a peculiarity of constitutional symptoms 10th one please a ninth observation is not it's not a very common observation it is only for provers so it's not something that you'll get to see on a day to day basis tenth observation is new symptoms appear after the remedy now what do you understand from that it is a wrong prescription what else can it be because you have not selected the same limb so you selected something completely different come on a completely different track after these new symptoms have passed away the patient will settle down to the original state and no improvement takes place so this has just been a sort of a um well what is a temporary medicinal aggravation it has not done any difference to the patient's existing symptoms so once they subside patient is just going to remain the way he was when he came to you and absolutely no improvement so what do you do in such a case before you come to any conclusion the new symptoms have to be verified whether these are the symptoms already present but patient forgot to mention those so it's possible that the patient forgot to mention the existence of these symptoms the last time or the first time he came to you so make a note and just match your previous case taking the the the, the previous case record and uh, the the new symptoms that have come and see whether something has matched or if the patient has left it out you have to once again question them and see
But if these are never noticed by the patient before, then this is unfavorable. So if they have come up without the patient noticing them at all, so that's not good. That is because of the bad selection of the remedy. But if the symptoms are not so serious, then wait till they pass off and select another remedy. That's a very simple thing. I just let them pass, give the patient a sack lack and ask them a placebo and ask them to come back to you. Wait for the symptoms to subside. If the symptoms are serious, then antidote the remedy first. So both ways. If it is not serious, give a placebo and ask them to come later. If it is very serious, give them an antidote and ask them to come back later. Just wait for all the symptoms to subside. So, Rucha, I hope I've cleared ninth and 10th observations for you. I've cleared Dhruv Joshi's question. Prerna, ma'am, can you repeat 8th and 9th observation slides? I think I just did it. So, that's been covered. How to differentiate between remedy, which is a good selection or palliative for second prescription? Means patient symptoms will be relieved in both cases. Okay, so... When you choose a good, that's a good question, actually, whether you, you want to ask whether it is a, well, what we've done is palliation or actually cured the patient. So if you selected the good similimum, you can expect the patient to feel relief for a longer period of time. In palliation, only that symptom has been uh, relieved, the, the presenting symptom or the, uh, what you say, the more severe and intense symptom that the patient comes to you with has been relieved. But there will be a recurrence, there will be a pattern to it in palliation, uh, it will keep recurring the way it was before, probably over a longer period of time. For example, if you're given a palliative today, you can expect the patient back. I'm just giving an example. It doesn't mean that they will come back in that time, but they will probably come back to you in exactly a week with the same pattern, with the same aggravation, same amelioration. But they'll say, doctor, I felt much better this time. I felt better for a longer time than I, than I used to. Whereas in a good selection, you can expect the, uh, the effect to be much deep, a lot more deep seated. Everything right from head to toe, right from within outward, everything, Herring's law of cure has been taken care of. So the patient will have a general feeling of feel, a general sense of feeling better. They'll say everything that I came to you with, I'm better with, not just the presenting complaint. And they might come to you after much longer. Doesn't mean that they will, you'll see them in 10 days or one week or whatever the period it is. Uh, that is a difference. How, okay. Akshay has a question. Ma'am, how we can interpret that symptoms take wrong direction in 12th observation? So it does not follow Herring's law of cure. As simple as that. So in Herring's law of cure, those two, three points are there. It will not follow any of those. Like the example that she gave, you're giving a remedy for rheumatism. So the joint pain is better, but it will show some aggravation in the heart or the spine which is not favorable at all. It's an organ of more importance, the heart or the spine. And if those are getting affected at the cost of getting your joints uh, uh, getting better, then that is not, that's that's a wrong direction, isn't it? The heart and the spine cannot take the beating of the medicine in order to make your joints feel better. So the wrong direction means it's not following Herring's law of cure. You to see the it's not it's not going from within outwards it's going from outward to inside it's not going from in the order of appearance reverse order of appearance it's not going from above downwards so none of these things conditions are being followed this is what it means by 12th observation uh, the, sorry the wrong direction okay i think i missed one question in between can you explain killer's aggravation uh sujata can you help me with this killer's aggravation which uh observation is this and third observation, homeopathic aggravation. Third observation. Okay, let's. Can you can you take this question? Yeah. Hmm. Basically, homeopathic aggravation is uh, just uh, slightly intense intensification of the existing symptoms. So uh, it is uh, it has happened because uh, we know that after administering homeopathic remedy. Uh, it will produce uh, the similar yet stronger disease than the natural myosmetic disease already present uh, often with the homeopathic remedy. So, mm. uh, if uh, both diseases, like, uh, if simple may follow, so both diseases are uh, fighting, so that's why there, mm. there will be some aggravation. And after that, after that, there will be uh, uh, improvement of the patient. 
so uh, that's why homeopathic uh, accreditation I seen then uh, that just for short period and that is the medicinal uh, disease uh, medicine producing the disease and then uh, the miasmatic and natural disease is removed and uh, the patient will be improved. So, which one is the killer aggravation? The medicinal aggravation or the disease aggravation? Medicinal aggravation. Medicinal aggravation. Why is it called killer? Because it's severe in its uh, manifestation. It feels the patient will feel that the symptoms have intensified, but then he's actually going to recover once the medicinal aggravation subsides. And sometimes the combination of disease aggravation, disease symptoms and medicinal aggravation together can be too much for the patient to bear. They'll find it very difficult to uh, bear it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Um, what is constitutional symptom by Rinki Bansal? Constitutional symptom is symptom which is typical of the constitution of that particular drug. See, you have constitutional remedies like an arsenic or a, or a lycopene. Forget arsenic. Arsenic is more of an acute uh, remedy uh, in, more, in many cases. Say like a lycopodium or say like a natremure. So constitutional symptom is uh, lycopodium will come out with some very, very specific symptoms during its proving. For example, red sand in urine or 4 to 8 p.m. aggravation or desire for sweets. That is very typical of a lycopodium constitution. A person who overall appears to be a lycopodium patient will come out with these symptoms. This is called as a constitutional symptom. It is specific to that constitution. You won't expect that in every uh, cold and cough. You won't expect that in every allergy that you come to. It's a rare or a peculiar symptom which is specific to that drug. And it is very useful in helping you select a remedy, a deep acting remedy. You have general symptoms, you have specific symptoms, constitutional symptoms help you pinpoint the constitutional drug which is meant for that case. What is the scope of homeopathy in cardiac diseases? There is good scope because cardiac diseases are uh, degenerative, they are progressive in their nature. You cannot completely cure a person of a heart block or you cannot completely cure a person of uh, an infarct. Or or, a, or, a, or what do you call a, in any of these, any circulatory disturbance like a thrombus or a, a embolism. But you can relieve the symptoms. It's To a large extent, these are, these are surgical conditions. So you cannot reverse the clot, you cannot reverse the block, and you cannot uh, do some, do what a surgery, you can't, you can't, you know, do what a stent or a bypass surgery can do. But then you can help reduce the blood pressure, you can help uh, bring down the pulse, both ways. If the pulse is too low, you can help raise it. If the pulse is too high, you can help lower it, blood pressure, over a long period of time. So again, this is to improve the general well-being of the patient. You cannot cure a cardiac disease. You can keep them comfortable. You can keep palliating. You can keep relieving the symptoms as in uh, over a longer period of time. And in these cases, many times, even mother tinctures are very useful because they are material doses. They are uh, crude drugs so they keep the body they maintain the, the the condition of the body over a period of time what when will be ken's 12 observations asked for exam which book to refer okay shivani i think ken's 12 observations is a is an important and a common question asked in the exams and um, Unfortunately, you have to learn all the observations in the right order. You cannot, you cannot lie or you cannot fake or make up your answers. But the interpretation and understanding is something that you should be able to do if you understand the theory behind the principle behind it. Uh, the best book to refer is Kent himself because it is by him. So Kent's philosophy is the best. But what you can do is you can take down these graphs. Uh, this recording will be available for you on a link later. And make your own notes. Write the observation, write the interpretation, and write the solution. What, what can be done in this case? Those are the three things. One is a drawing. One is the interpretation. You have to understand why does this happen. And the third thing is you have to understand what to do, the solution. Okay. Sorry, ma'am, you skipped my question. Sorry, Srishti, what was your question? What did I miss? I answered it, no? The question on uh, differentiating between a good selection or a palliative, a second prescription. I had answered that. I was saying that the repetition and the repetition and the 
uh, the, the symptoms that are repeat and the pattern at which it follows is the difference between a good well-selected constitutional remedy and a palliative. Palliative will show the same pattern again and again because every time the effect of the remedy wears off, you can expect the symptoms to come back in the same pattern. And palliative is more for the presenting complaint. The chief complaint that the patient comes to you with, only that they'll see a relief. They won't have an overall feeling of well-being. Whereas in a good selection of uh, a deep acting remedy, you will find that the overall well-being of the patient is maintained. Okay. Is, was that the question, Srishti? Oh, I was not. You all should have texted me. <laughs> okay. Did you hear me saying it again this time? I'll repeat it, no problem. So the difference between a palliative and a well-selected similimum is that a palliate, okay, you got it, huh? Okay, all right. Wait, I'll just type it down also. Hold on, I'm just typing answer to you. Okay, so here's the basic answer. I think you just have to build up on that. Yeah, thank you, Shivani. We will plan uh, a set of seminars on myisms. We'll have to deal with myisms in general and take each myism as one uh, lecture. We'll do it. We'll we just plan it and do it. It's a very important and very essential topic in philosophy and organ. Any more doubts? Any more questions? <laughs> Okay. Any more doubts? Yeah, yeah most welcome. So, uh, not related to Ken's observations, there is one more point I thought I'll bring it up because when I went through the slides, it came to me. Does everybody know the difference between SORIC and anti SORIC? Hmm. Thank you, Rinki, for your nice feedback. It makes us feel very encouraged. Yeah, we are trying to aim because everybody's timings, everybody's schedules, family life, we have to coordinate on everything. We are working on it. We'll make sure that, uh, you know, we, are try to, we try to present as many as possible, as often as possible. Okay, but coming back to my question, you can type your answers. What is the difference between SORIC and anti-SORIC? Because in the very first observation, it said that the anti-SORIC selected was very deep. So it's a very basic... Since you all want myisms, answer this one. Anybody? I'm I'm not going to scold you if you don't get the answer, right? Is this something that you should know? Anyone? Antisoric and soric, what is the difference? It's a very simple answer. Nobody, huh? Come on. It's not an exam. Sujata, you're also quiet. Sujata? Okay. Shall I answer? Yeah, ma'am. It's very simple. Soric is nothing but the diseased condition uh, or the soric myism. Anti soric is just the remedy. So one is the disease condition, the other is the remedy selected to deal with soric conditions. Such a simple answer. <laughs> Okay. Any other doubts? Anything else? Okay. Somebody, Shara Chandra has asked me, ma'am, if you are a practitioner, did you observe Herring's law of cure in your cases? Very good question. To be honest, we many times come across people who are uh, here for acute conditions. 
So yeah, I mean, uh, they feel better. They usually come with combination of respiratory and skin complaints, or they come with acute uh, uh, gastric trouble. So yes, if, if you're clever enough, you'll notice that the persons uh, from from in their their uh, deeper symptoms like the gastric trouble or the or the or whatever the breathing trouble, all that gets better first. First, they say that yeah, I'm able to sleep well, which means that their passages are clear inside. Then slowly, the external things get better, like the mucus or the or the eruptions those are all the residue so yes if you choose a remedy properly and if you are able to pay attention then you can notice that it is following heading's law of cure ma'am antisoric means patient have already soric miasm present no so soric means the miasm antisoric is a remedy that you choose see i'll just type it down A thing it says in case your examiner chooses to ask you or trouble you with that question, just you know that this is the answer. That's all. Anything else? Any other doubts? We'll try to increase the number of uh, webinars. It's just that we have to all coordinate with our timings, with our schedules at home. So we are trying our best. Uh, thank you for disease potential. What, uh, Sujata? What uh, topic does disease potential come under? Okay, Ravina, can you tell us uh, which which topic or which uh, subject it which which uh, topic it comes under disease potential? I can elaborate on that then. Where in in context to what you've read this particular topic? Can you tell us, Ravina, if you don't mind? Okay. Um, for those of you who want to contact me for any more queries or any more doubts, I think some of you had asked me for some contact. I'll just share my email ID uh, with you. Uh, here's my email ID in case you want to text me later or something. So Jatha's contact is already there. So Jatha, just put that slide, no, with your email ID. Yeah. So you could, yeah. you people can contact any of us, either of us, if there are any more doubts, any more queries that come up later. Sorry. Here is my email ID. Yeah, this is my email ID. You might, you can text me or you can uh, get in touch with me. Any more queries? I'll work on this disease potential. Maybe I can address it in the next uh, lecture. Even I'm not familiar with this topic. So let me just do a little bit of research. Ravina, if you can tell me where you read this, in which topic and which book, I can uh, elaborate and explain it better to you. If that is all, then we could close this down and uh, we will choose the next week's topic and share it with all of you. If there are any specific topics that you people would like us to address and to deal with, please let us know, give us your feedback. And uh, we've already covered um, the first few aphorisms, we have done case taking, we have done posology. Today we have done prognosis and the 12 observations of Kent. So other than myasms, myasms we'll deal with in a few more lectures. But if you have any other topics, please let us know. You can even type it here or you can type it to us separately.
Thank you very much for your feedback. We're always happy to receive something positive. Thank you very much. I think today's lecture was very straightforward, very clear, without any interruptions, without any uh, sound quality going for a toss. So I think we're all quite satisfied today. I hope the listeners are also very happy with the presentation today. This is a topic which even I struggled with in college because you just have to by heart the order of the observations. There's no other way to know them. But you're able to understand. Second prescription. Okay, that's a nice topic. We can deal with that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll select the topic and let you know and we'll send a, a notification once it has been finalized. If that is all, then we'd like to sign off and we can meet again next week. We'll send you any more updates, change in timings or, ch or the topic confirmation once it has been decided. So hope to see you all again next week. Thank you, Sujata. And uh, I will be closing the chat now. Let's exit the webinar. Thank you and good night.